Yo, what up? This is Marcel Reese, Las Vegas Raiders, and you're on right now listening to The Boys Podcast. Marcel Reese and Joe Zito. He's running hard, able to break tackles. He's in the clear. Puts the speed on. Touchdown, open. What a move by Marcel Reese. Now, you don't expect this from a fullback, but Reese... In college, a wide receiver, a tight end, a fullback in the pros, although did play running back four or five times last week or last year. Well, they love the power play to the left because they want to pull that right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to an episode of the Boys Podcast. Today, I am joined by an awesome and amazing guest. What is your name, sir? <laughs> Joe, what's going on? My name is Marcel Reese. How you doing? Doing pretty good, Marcel. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Great to hear that. What have you been up to during, you know, during these times of quarantine? Like, what have you been up to? You know, it's interesting. During the times of quarantine, most people, you would think, you know, are bored out of their mind and they're sitting at home and, you know, they have this cabin fever type, uh, you know, thing going on. But for me, I, I seem to have almost gotten busier. You know, you start to pick up more projects, you, you know, start doing things with the kids and, mm-hmm. you know, take on a new job at, at a crazy time uh, for our uh, our society, a different way, crazy climate. But um, but, you know, I've, been, I've just been uh, I've been doing a lot of work. I've been doing a ton of work, a ton of different projects uh, with the Raiders in Las Vegas, with the community. Um, we have a ton of great things going on right now. So it's been really special. Awesome. I can't wait to see. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. Yeah, my quarantine, I basically, I don't know if I told you, I virtually, you know, like the beginning of quarantine, I graduated virtually high school. So you graduated virtually. So you were part of the, uh, the, the, the famous 2020 class, huh? That graduated yeah. virtually. Well, yeah. first of all, Joe, I will say congratulations on your graduation, virtual or not. You mm-hmm. worked for it and you did it. And um, that's awesome. Uh, and now you have to get prepared for what's next for you, Joe. Um, yeah. And it's awesome to see you doing this and to hear that you just graduated, um, you know, less than a year ago, uh, probably coming up close to a year right now. But now you're sitting here and you're doing something else. And that's a that's a great thing. You're not just wasting your time, um, you know, playing video games or, or something. You are actually being useful with your time. And um, doing great things like a podcast. Thank you. Yeah, believe it or not, I figured I'd do these podcast interviews to spread positivity. You know, when people like are feeling down and mm-hmm. depressed, spread positivity, interviewing people. <laughs> you know, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's the uh, that's the start of an awesome life, Joseph Zito. So, uh, your mom, whom I have spoken to, uh, should be very proud of you and and the cause and and why you're doing what you're doing. Thank you, Mr. Reese Marcel. Thank you. Okay, so what made you want to become a football player, and did you have a big inspiration for football? You know, uh, my story is kind of crazy. I grew up in Inglewood, California, which is, um, uh, you know, a, a beautiful place, a different place than, than a lot of other places, but it's a beautiful place. Not the easiest place to, to live and grow up, but it was home for us. Um, I was a basketball player my entire life. And uh, my mom moved us out of the city. My brothers and I, I have eight brothers. We were, we were heartbroken to move out of the city out of nowhere. Um, and her parting gift to us was we can play football. So, um, you know, I stepped on the football field uh, junior year in high school at 16 years old. And the rest was kind of history. Um, you know, football kind of chose me. And, and I love football and football loves me. So we kind of had a love affair uh, start early on in life at 16 years old. And I'm still in love with football to this day. Dang. I have, you know, I thought you were a very talented football player when you played. I, I, I appreciate that, Joe. Yeah. And by far, believe it or not, like, my, like you know, running backs slash fullbacks, you're my favorite by those positions. <laughs> I appreciate that. Listen, this is a great start to a career when you have a guest and you tell them that, you, that they were your favorite. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now, who was your favorite and least favorite team growing up? And did you have a favorite player? Like, did you idolize? So growing up, so growing up, I was a, I was a, uh, you know, we were a basketball family. 
Um, but we love the Raiders because we were, you know, we grew up in the, we grew up in the city. We grew up in the hood, and and everybody wanted to be a Raider. We wanted to be notorious for something. We wanted to be, we wanted to be bad. We wanted to uh, stand up for what we believed in, and we wanted to take no stuff from anybody. Uh, yeah. So everybody wanted to be a Raider. And one thing I tell people after I became a Raider on the football field that you don't just play being a Raider. Being a Raider is a lifestyle. And um, and it's been ingrained in me ever since the day I was born. I just didn't know it yet. So uh, so when it comes to a favorite team, to me, there's only one team, and that's the Raiders. You know, I'm a Raider through and through. I bleed silver and black. Uh, when it comes to favorite players, my favorite player of all time is Randy Moss. I never got to play with him. Um, I, I've spoken to him, met him, you know, seen him around, and and he's one of the best human beings in the world to me. Um, and still uh, a huge inspiration what he did on the field, without a doubt. Uh, so when it comes to fair players, it was Randy Moss and Bo Jackson. Wow. Yeah, those are good ones right there. <laughs> really good ones. <laughs> wow. Well, if I ever get Bo and Randy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, hey, Marcel, you want to join something? Really? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We'll be on together for sure. That'd be cool. And then you talk about Raiders. I've actually had like he, I think he played like maybe a couple years with the Raiders. He it was a receiver. Do you do you, he was mainly known for the Bears? Willie Galt. I know who Willie Galt is. Absolutely. I've had him as a guest. Oh, was great in his time too. I've had him on as a guest. That's a pop, a guest on the podcast. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. Okay. Now, did you have a team that you didn't like though? Like. I know you like the Raiders, but is there a team like said, I don't like this team? I don't care you no, know, uh, being a Raider, I don't like, I, I don't really like any team, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, you know, but the, the teams I dislike the most, mm-hmm. uh, we'd have to say the uh, Denver Broncos. Oh, yeah. Um, the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. And the San Diego or LA Chargers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I don't like anyone in the AFC West. I don't root for them, I don't like them. And I enjoy beating up on them. <laughs> nice. Okay. Now, how does it feel to have the Washington Huskies record for longest play from scrimmage with a reception for 98 yards? And it was a touchdown <laughs> against the University of Arizona. How does that feel? <laughs> you know, Joe, when you say 98 yards and it was a touchdown, if, if somebody runs 98 yards, they better score a touchdown. Or that's yeah. kind of a, that's a disappointing play for you. Uh, but with that being said, Joe, it, it feels amazing, you know, um, when it comes to it, it's just a part of uh, my athletic legacy, you know, to have a record like that, that is, um, you know, only, there's only one way to break it, and you got to get one more yard than I can, that I did, um, but hopefully it stands for a while, but records are made to be broken, and at that time when it is broken, I'll be there to congratulate the next player that steps up. Uh, it was an amazing uh, play. That is that has gone down in history, um, you know. Not only my longest catch and Jake's longest throw, but the longest play in history for the University of Washington and the Pac, the Pac-10, Pac-12 now. Uh, so it was it was an awesome play. Um, it's often referred to uh, a lot, but uh, it was a special play for so many reasons for me. The guys who I was on the field with, um, everything that went into that play uh, happening and being successful and being executed the right way um you know some people who were on that field one of my near and dear friends who was on that field with me who was the first person to hug me after i made it to the end zone uh is no longer with us right now he he passed away years ago uh so that's another special uh part of that play for me as an individual and personally so um you know it was a great play it was a fun play and uh you know, it's in history, so there's 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 not much you could really say about it. It's there. Yeah, it's a great play. I actually saw like some like I actually saw on YouTube. There's, a, there's actually the video. It was really good. I like the play. Did you? Did, one one thing people don't realize is the ref that was trying to keep up with me running. He pulled yeah. his hamstring on that play. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a that's a fun little uh, nugget for you on that that particular play. Wow, he's like, oh, my hamstring. <laughs> exactly. Wow, okay. Now, what when you play, what was your pregame snack, drink, song, and ritual? Whew, pregame snack, to be honest with you, I, 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 I didn't eat much on game days. I was, I'm kind of like that 
freak guy that just on game day just turn into something different, someone you really don't want to be around. And, um, you know, I enjoy that transformation for myself. I just want to be a monster every time I touch the field. And uh, I didn't eat much. I wasn't hungry, had no appetite. Uh, I would, you know, if it was a if it was an early game, I really didn't eat anything. And if it was a late game, you know, I'd have fruit. So any any given game day, I'd probably have some sort of fruit, um, usually pineapple and strawberry. Um, you know, if it was a late game, maybe I'd add some yogurt with that just to have some protein in my system. Um, the most I'd ever eat, if it was like a Monday night or a Sunday night game, is have like a, a petite filet mignon and, and just eat that. You know, uh, I didn't really have a huge appetite. Uh, when it comes to drink, I drink a ton of water and um, electrolytes. So you get these packet of electrolytes. It's super salty. And we, I just down them because I sweat a ton. And the last thing I want to have is in the third or fourth quarter, I start cramping up and I have to come out of the game. And once you start cramping, it's hard to really get your body out of that mode. So, um, so that was my pregame drink. And your last question, pregame song, man, you know, for most of my life, the only thing I ever listened to was Tupac, man. You know, I'm being from L.A. That's what I grew up on my whole life. So I would I would literally Darren McFadden, my best friend in the world, used to get so mad at me because it was all I would play. You know, <laughs> all Tupac. Right. Um, you know, probably about. Six years into my career, I switched up, stopped listening to secular music. I only went to Christian hip hop. So it was Andy Minio, You Can't Stop Me. Okay. You know, and the and the the title of the song says it all. You yeah. can't stop me. And it was a phenomenal song. It was my theme song for uh CBS and Monday Night Football. So whenever they announced me, that was a song that 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 they played with it. Andy Minio, You Can't Stop Me. And I still listen to it to this day because I still believe no one can stop me. I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, because like off of the ritual, you know, I actually had somebody say they went to the game 10 hours beforehand. Oh, that happens a lot. That happens uh, a lot. You'd be surprised uh, some, of the, some of the things that some guys do. Uh, you know, the world of sports and athletics is, is – um, it's kind of weird. It's an extremely superstitious world. Yeah, that, we, that 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 we live in when it comes to sports and athletics. So uh, it's interesting to see, to to see some of the things happen, but um, but more often than not, you know, you th- there's there's eighty percent of the guys are extremely superstitious, and yeah. um, they do things that way. And and we were the same way. You know, we we want to drive the same car pregame of the game. Uh, on on game days, we want to take the same route to the game. We want to make sure that we don't have any um, unknowns or any surprises come game day. You want to be prepared for it all. Yeah, and that's cool that you mentioned Darren. He was actually a good running back, too, Darren McFadden. Amazing running back. Yeah. Amazing too, running back. That would be cool. Like Have like a reunion with the Bear, another Raiders team. That would be cool. You yeah. and <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, listen, you know, one thing about a Raider, it's a family. It's not just a team. So a lot of yeah. us, you know, we, we keep in contact, you know, Darren and I, Tyvon Branch, uh, Tywan Jones, wow. Tyvon, um, Khalif Barnes. I mean, we'll talk every single day. We don't let a day go by without us talking to each other. So we have this very uh, tight-knit family that we that we have uh, when it comes to being a Raider. Well, that's actually like the, when you mention all those guys, those are like my – like all – like this is my favorite like Raiders team, you know. I, I love the uh, Raiders team. It was a great team, you know. Awesome. That's awesome. Just win, baby. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Now, how does it feel to have been named to many Pro Bowls? How does that feel? You know, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, um, you know, when, when you're playing and, and, you know, you just kind of go, you want to be the best and you're working at being the best. You never really have time to reflect on those types of things. But, you know, it's, it's you know, physically one of the greatest accomplishments is to be named by your peers as a Pro Bowler, as, as the best in the world at what you do. Um, yeah. when it comes to the Pro Bowl, those are the best in the world. Uh, so being a four time Pro Bowler and all pro, uh, by named by my peers and my competition and my rivals and some of my teammates, that is, is, is definitely a, a special honor that, you know, I'll cherish forever. Um, but even more important than those 
uh, Pro Bowls is is being named a captain of my team by my teammates, you know, six years out of the 10 years I was playing. That, that Joe, is, is the biggest honor because uh, although it does have some to do with my play on the field, it has a lot to do with, with my character, integrity off the field as well. And mm-hmm. my teammates having that respect for me and entrusting me with their careers and, and being able to lead them in uh, those, those um, seasons, respectively. You seem like a great and awesome and humble leader, in my opinion, Marcel. I appreciate that, Joe. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Now, how does it feel to have been named to a second team All Pro? All Pro. No, being, being being an All Pro, you know, again, it's it's just like being being a Pro Bowler. You know, being an All Pro is just like being a Pro Bowler to me. It's it's um being considered the best, and that's what we do it for. You know, you want to be the best podcast host, right? So yeah. be, getting that award and, and, and um, you know, allowing, you know, being able to have your all your hard work yeah. uh, acknowledged is um, is gratifying. Mm-hmm. I like that. Now, who would you say is the most exciting player and team to watch right now in the NFL? Who's, sorry. Uh, you know, I love my Raiders. Yeah. Uh, and and that's where the buck starts and stops for me. You know, when I watch other teams, it's just trying to figure out how to beat them. Yeah. See, that's my your Raider right now is, you know, Darren Waller, the tight end. Darren Waller. Uh, yes, absolutely. Darren Waller is, you know, one of the best tight ends in the game right now. Um, he is – he creates, you know – unbelievable matchups for us everywhere he lines up whether it's the outside middle or inside uh he is a a very great blocker where uh, it, darren waller just plays winning football every down he's on the field and um i love the guy man you know he's he, he's the guy he's the type of guy that i love to play with um yeah. and and uh we just missed each other by a couple years but if Darren Waller and I were on the field together, we'd definitely have some fun. No doubt about it. That would be awesome. You and <laughs> that would be like sick. Like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, do you have a favorite band and our, and our artist and type of music? And what is your favorite food? <laughs> um, let's see. Jeez. Again, you know, growing up, all this was Tupac, and that was like that was it. You know, so Tupac, Nipsey Hussle. Uh, when it comes to to artists of all time, um, because I can relate to them, you know, yeah. a little, you know, from the lifestyle to the neighborhoods to everything else, you know, they 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 had their albums are um, my stories, my life on vinyl, and um, that when I can relate to that, that's special. That's what that's what a uh, great music is to me. Um, when it comes to, to a genre now, it's just Christian hip hop, man. Christian rap, you know, just trying to make sure that, uh, you know, I stay true to myself and, and, and at the same time, you know, honor my God. That's it. I like that. Now, do you have a favorite food? Man, I'm a foodie, Joe. Um, so I love all food, you know, okay. um, and, and, you know, I cook too, so. When it comes to favorite food, it just depends on my mood. Mm-hmm. All time favorites, though, I would have to say uh, tacos, and and I leave that open because I can do tacos in so many different ways, just depending on my my mood that day um, or that hour. Uh, and other than that, is is uh, chicken wings. I'm a, a a chicken wing freak of nature, and mm-hmm. I will I crush wings as much as I can, as often as I can. And um, I love them, man. Crispy, 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 and well seasoned. Nice. We should have a maybe if I ever meet you, we should have a competition. I actually eat a lot, so we should have a competition. Be- oh, Joe, you couldn't see me, Joe. Man, we could do it. We could do it, but you, you don't want no parts of this in eating. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's a challenge. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Do you have a favorite movie and TV show? I love all movies. Um, uh so that's tough 
Hmm. I can't pick out one right now. One would be uh, the movie Life with Martin Lawrence and uh, Eddie Murphy. Um, my favorite sports movie is Gladiator. Okay, I kind of lesser crawl. Uh, you know, yeah, most people don't consider that a sports movie, but back then that was the only sport they had. Um, yeah. So I, I love that movie, Gladiator. Um, let's see. Um, I think that's, I think, you know, I love all movies. Though. I watch all movies. When it comes to TV shows, my favorite TV show probably, my favorite TV show of all time is Martin. Um, okay. Uh, you, you're way too young for Martin. It was a 90s show and uh, starring Martin Lawrence, and he played a few characters, and it's hilariously funny. Um, and right now, my other favorite shows are like investigative shows. I love uh, NCIS Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you talk about like older movies and TV shows. I actually grew up on it. My parents raised me on it, older, the older stuff. So That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and I've also interviewed. Do you know who Tommy Chung is? Fusion Chung. Yeah, yeah. Interview. I've interviewed him. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's a good one for your lineup. And I've interviewed. Do you know Claudia Wells? Do you know who she is? No. She was uh, Jennifer, the girlfriend of Marty in Back to the Future. Okay. Yeah, that's another good one. I see you, Joe. Thank you. Good stuff. Good <laughs> Thank stuff. you. I feel I mentioned like some classics. Like you're like, okay, I know who this person is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, now, if you never went to football, what would your career be, and what other interests and hobbies do you have besides playing football? I'm a basketball player, like I said. Um, so I always thought I would I would be a hooper my okay. whole life. So um, yeah, I always thought I'd be a hooper, but ended up uh, obviously playing Good. football. So. Um, right now I'd probably say a chef just because I love cooking, but back then I would have probably just been a basketball player. Wow. Now what position? Like point guard, shooting guard, small Man, forward? I, I play positionless basketball. I do it all. I guess, right. I, I guess that, uh, in, now in 2021, they give the term point forward. So that's where I would, that's probably the sweet spot for me. Okay. I, I, I imagine like Marcel Reese, basketball player. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Okay. Now, how does it feel to be a senior advisor to the owner and president of the Raiders? And like, what responsibilities do you have within the organization? Man, that that so to answer your first question, how that feels is is uh is phenomenal, man. You know, it it um when it comes down to it, it it, it solidifies and proves me right in everything that I thought and felt about the Raider organization, the Raider name, and what it means to be a Raider. Um, it, it's gratifying to see my loyalty rewarded with continuing my legacy and career in the family and home where I belong, which is right in the Raider building. Um, mm-hmm. As far as responsibilities, it's just like when I was on the field and I had my jersey and helmet on. My responsibility is to do anything and everything I can to make the Raiders a champion. The only thing different is sometimes I wear a tie now. <laughs> so it's uh, it's fun. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of long nights and late nights. Um, but it's worth it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 not work. It's it's a uh, it's love for me. You know, I love the organization. Uh, I love the city. Mm-hmm. Love the owner and president. And um, we have a phenomenal working relationship together. And uh, it's good to, to it's, it's, a, it's an honor for them to trust me with the autonomy to be able to um, do my thing and, and trust that I can make the right decisions uh, for our organization. I like that. They have a bright future, too. Like, they are players they have i think they'll do really good yeah it's gonna be fun thank you okay wow now what is your advice for people who want to become a football player Ooh, it's uh how can i say um work hard okay you gotta work 
um, no matter how good you are, no matter how athletic you are, no matter where you grow up, no matter what school you go in, even to the point, no matter where you get drafted, we just had the, the NFL draft, the 50th NFL draft, no matter where you're drafted, you still have to work. Um, a lot of people get complacent and they settle um, for what's given to them. And sometimes you got to outwork that and, and take what you want. And that's my advice for people. Go get it. You have to go get it. You have to grind. Don't take no for an answer. And, um, you know, continue to build those relationships. You know, to, to, to sum that up, what I tell kids all the time, and I remember I was, I was talking to some, some boys in London who were just starting to play American football. And they asked me, what can I tell them? I said, respect the game. You have to respect this game. Uh, when you're playing it on the field, you have to respect it so you can protect yourself, protect your teammates, and not get hurt. When you're off the field, you have to respect it and do your, do, do your studying. Put in the work off the field to understand what you're doing, how you're supposed to do it, and when you're supposed to do it. Okay. And uh, if you do that, you can, be, you can be a great teammate. You will learn the life lessons that football has to give you. And um, when you put that much into the game – you know, you get a world, a brand new world and a brand new life out of the game. So, you know, the cliche is what you put in is what you get out. But when you put your all into football, you get even more than you expect out of it. I like that. I also like to say, like, maybe like stay humble. Remember where you like came from? Absolutely. Like Absolutely. I like that. Good advice, Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> <I like that. laughs> now, before I ask you my, like, you know, final question, is there any questions you like to ask? So, do you have any questions? <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Do I have any questions? Contrary to most believe, I don't. I don't really talk too much, Joe. But to Joe, I, I, what I, I don't. I don't really have any questions. But I can say I'm proud of you. When you take that initiative, uh, it, it, you cha- It's a challenge to people, and uh, challenge is a good thing. So yeah. keep challenging people, keep challenging yourself, and and working at it to get better. Um, once you get comfortable, don't be nervous, be comfortable in yourself, be comfortable in your skin, be confident. Cause when you speak with that confidence and assertiveness, um, it comes off in a beautiful way to all your listeners. So continue to do what you're doing. And, um, you know, you're a young man that's going, going to big places and, and, uh, I'm proud of you. Just don't forget about the little people when you get, get big and famous and you're running the best podcast. Cause, um, you know, us little people still want to act like we know you. Thank you, Marcel. Yeah, off I told you what I want to go into, like my major, what I want to major, did I tell you? No, you didn't tell me yet. I want to be like a director slash script writer. <laughs> or screenwriter. <laughs> slash script writer. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. Because that, that's what I do as a hobby, <laughs> too. Keep shooting at it. Thank Keep you. Keep shooting at it and... um do do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes to get there. Now, Marcel, is there anything you like to promote and shout out that I can link down below? Anything to help you out? <laughs> you know what? Um, I think we're good. You know, we have a lot of great things going on. Uh, we just acquired the Las Vegas Aces, so we have a WNBA team, and we're looking for them to do great things. Um, you know, I, I, I believe that we'll win a win a WNBA championship this year. Have some phenomenal players. And, uh, and Angel and Chelsea Gray and Kelsey Plum and Asia Wilson and Liz Cambridge and everyone's, you know, uh, Bill Ambeer's our coach. And, you know, uh, we just hired Nikki Fargus, Nikki, Nikki Fargus, Justin Fargus' wife, as a team president. And Las Vegas Aces are going to do phenomenal, phenomenal things this year. So we're all excited about that. We have the Al Davis, Eddie Robinson Leadership Academy going on that we are starting and, and building the infrastructure for that. So we have a ton of great things going on right now. And, um, and I'm excited about them. Uh, so just if you keep a lookout for that, we'll be good. Awesome. I like that. Okay. Well, I thank you all so much for watching. Thank you and Marcel for being awesome and amazing guest. <laughs> I appreciate you, Joe. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Have a great day, everybody. And stay awesome. And stay awesome, Marcel. You too. Stay awesome, Joe. Just win, baby.